name is Sarah Jo and I am an interpretive aide here at beautiful San Clemente State Park. Today I brought my animal tracking field guide with me because we are going to learn about the animals that live here at San Clemente State Park. And then we're going to go on a virtual hike and see if we can explore any evidence that these animals have left behind through a process called animal tracking. Does anybody know what animal tracking is? Well, if you have ever run your fingers through your hair and you noticed a hair fall out, or maybe you've been hiking on the trail with your family and you notice the footprints of an animal or a human that was there before you, or maybe you've been eating chicken or fish and you leave the bones on your plate, or maybe you've been outside in the rain and you track muddy footprints inside on the floor. Animal tracking is the art of learning where an animal has been and what it was doing by observing tracks or signs that it leaves behind. Think for a second, what evidence of animals have you seen before? Either here at our state park or in your backyard. If you thought about hair, fur, footprints, bones, or waste, you are correct. These are all signs that animals have been here before. So before we go on our virtual hike to search for our own animal evidence, we need to first learn about the animals that are native to our state park. The coyote and the bobcat both live in surrounding areas near San Clemente State Park, so it's not unusual to come across their tracks or other evidence of them while you are out hiking on our trails. The raccoon and the striped skunk are two animals that are commonly seen at San Clemente State Park. These animals are often seen at nighttime as they are nocturnal, but you can see evidence of them if you look closely. You can also see California ground squirrel and desert cottontail at San Clemente State Park. These animals can be seen during the day, but they are harder to see because they camouflage and blend in easily with their surroundings. You can see evidence of these animals if you look closely. Their tracks are tiny. When we find evidence of an animal track, our first step is determine what species left the track. We can look at things such as the size and shape of the pad, the number and placement of toes and claws, the width of the track pattern, the stride, which is the distance between two tracks, and the gait, which is the pattern of movement, such as walking or trotting. We can tell more easily where an animal was headed by following the tracks and how quickly it was moving. Another way to tell that animals have been to an area is by observing your surroundings to see if you notice any doors or windows. They may say, Ranger Sarah, we don't have any doors or windows outside. But when animals move through grass or shrubs or dirt and snow, they leave behind holes, tunnels, and pathways that are all evidence of their movement. Can you see the examples of doors and windows I was talking about in these images? When we find a door or window, like paths and grass or holes in the dirt, we can observe it and try to imagine how large the animal was that created it. This can help us figure out what animal could have left behind this evidence. In addition to this concept of doors and windows, animals leave behind another sign of evidence. Can anybody guess what that is? I'll give you a hint. You definitely don't want to step in it while you're walking, and it is sometimes really smelly. If you guess scat, you are correct. Scat is animal waste or feces, and it is a term used for wild animals. All animals leave behind waste, even humans, although we do not tend to leave it on the ground. You may walk your dog and after it goes to the bathroom, you pick up its droppings with a bag and throw it away. Wild animals do not have this option. Some animals are carnivores, meaning they eat meat. Some eat plants, meaning they are herbivores, and others consume both plants and meat, and they are called omnivores, and this can all be found by studying scat. Now that we have learned about animals that are native to San Clemente State Park and what evidence to look for, are you ready to begin our hike? When going on your own nature hike, it is best to remember always to stay on trail, to always leave an area exactly how you found it. If you see any animals, it is best not to approach them. And if you see any scat, do not touch it because it can make you sick.
between you and the sun. This creates shadows, which makes the tracks more visible to see. A great time to look for animal tracks is right after it rains. The ground is soft, so animal prints can be left more easily. Sometimes I like to crouch low to the ground and pretend that I'm an animal. When we take new perspectives, sometimes new patterns will emerge around us. A few questions to ask yourself when you find evidence of animals are, what is it? How long has it been here? How would you describe the shape of this track? What is similar and different between this track and another? Are the tracks close together or far apart? How would you describe the shape and size of the scat? What do you see in it? It looks like we maybe found something here. So how would you describe the shape of this paw print? What does it look like to you? Is it round or square or oval shaped? It looks like it could be a, maybe a dog track or a coyote track. So we know that coyotes have four toes. So one, two, three, four, and so do dogs. And um, you can see a little bit of claw marks in here too. So let's see, it looks like it might be like two and a half inches and it looks kind of oval shaped. So let's look at our, our field guide here and see if we can match it up. So we know that it's not a striped skunk. It looks like it could be not a wolf because we don't have wolves in this area. So it looks like it could match up with the Coyote, what do you guys think? To me, it looks like a coyote track. Coyote prints and dog prints are often confused. Compared to the dog track, the coyote print is more oval shaped and the claw marks are less prominent. Let's see if we can find any other signs of coyotes around here now that we've found some prints. So do you remember that concept of doors and windows that I talked about? Do you see any doors or windows here? It looks like if you follow the coyote tracks that you could maybe see a little trail that the coyote might have made when he was on his way. Do you see here? It looks like we maybe found some scat. How would you describe the, the, the size and shape of this scat? It looks like it's kind of long and rope-like. And what do we see in it? You can see some fur and berries in it. We know that coyotes have an omnivorous diet. Let's see, what do we see in this scat? Looks like you can see some fur in there and berries. We know that coyotes have an omnivorous diet, meaning they eat both plants and meat. Let's see, where was it found? It was found really, it was found near its, um, this trail here that looks like maybe the coyote made. We know that coyotes um, use their scat to mark their territories and since this scat is kind of right near the trail and right near where maybe the coyote could have been going. It definitely looks like it could be coyote scat. Well, it looks like we have more tracks here. This is an animal that I we haven't seen one like this before. So it looks like it has like a little thumb, like our hands, and then it has one, two, three, four, five fingers and claw marks. So what kind of animal do you think this could be? Do you know any animals that have hands that they use for grabbing? Maybe you've seen one in your campsite before, grabbing your trash. To me, this looks like it could be a raccoon track. So raccoons are dexterous, which means that they can use their hands like we do for grabbing things. They have like a little thumb here. So based on what we know about raccoons, I think that this is a raccoon track. Well, it looks like we found some more tracks here. I don't see any claw marks. So remember when I was saying that um, 
cats don't leave claw marks. This looks like it could be a bobcat track. are bobcat tracks there's a good chance that these this could be um, bobcat scat so I don't see any seeds or berries in there what do you think um, bobcats are carnivores which means they only eat meat so you wouldn't see any seeds or berries in, in that and it looks like it's kind of long and kind of tapers off at the end there so yeah I think that could be bobcat scat what do you think Thank you all for joining me today on this virtual hike. It's been so much fun. I encourage you all to go on your own.